Hey, Reckless, what's going on? It is good to be back with you guys for another week. And uh, we've got a special uh, presentation uh, this time and this week and uh, kind of a new thing that we're going to be doing in our series that we're in called Coming In Hot. And so this series, just to give you a little bit of a, a catch up in case some of you guys have missed, this series is all about the kingdom of God. And we're talking about what it would look like to live a part of the kingdom of God and, and what those characteristics would be. Why does it matter so much that Jesus has come to usher in his kingdom? And for it to take over our lives, and what does that look like if that were to happen? And so if we were going to meet this week at Reckless, this would be senior night. And, um, and our seniors would be putting on uh, the, entire, the entire service and uh, something that we've loved doing over the last few years. Um, and so because of our current situation and, and the climate of our culture right now, uh, we're going to do this all online. So this is still senior night. This is still a senior conversation. And so I've got a bunch of our seniors that are in this chat with us and that are going to contribute to this conversation uh, for the next few minutes. And so I'm going to take a minute and just give them the opportunity to introduce themselves and, uh, and then we'll jump into the conversation. Okay. Hey, I'm Angelina Pacitti, Um, and I go to Harrison High School in the fall. I'll be attending Georgia Southern um, as a music education major. Okay. Hey, I'm Claire. I attend East Pauling High School, and in the fall, I'm going to be going to an esthetician school. Hey, I'm Gracie. I'm a senior at North Pauling High School, and this fall, I'm going to be going to the University of Georgia and studying advertising. Hey, everyone. I'm Kayla Holsey. I go to South Pauling High School, and in the fall, I'll be attending UTC to major in nursing. Hey guys, I'm Shannon Northern. I go to South Paulding High School and in the fall, I'm gonna to go to Georgia College in Milledgeville and major in environmental science. Hey guys, my name's Thomas. I am the recorder player for the Rhombuses. I go to Hiram High School and in the fall, I will be going on tour with the Rhombuses. Hey guys, I'm uh, Trevor McCravey. I actually play the ukulele for the Rhombuses and I'm also going on tour. So yeah. So yeah. <laughs> So, so we've got two, we're, man, it's, what an honor that we have two members of the Rhombuses in the chat joining us for senior night. This is a pretty big deal. So appreciate you guys uh, carving time out of your busy traveling schedule as musicians and, and just superstars to be able to join us. Of course. Um, <laughs> so we're going to dive into the conversation. So tonight, or for this, this week's uh, video, and our focus is on faith. Um, and why faith matters so much, why faith is such a big deal. So again, we've been just kind of looking at these different characteristics of what it looks like to live in the kingdom of God. And so last week we talked about hope and what it looked like to live uh, hope-filled lives as followers of Jesus and, uh, and how necessary that is in, in today's culture. And so um, for this conversation, we're talking about faith. Um, what does faith look like? What, what is the kind of faith that God wants us to, to have? Um, and why does faith matter so much? Why, is, why does it matter so much that, that uh, we live with faith every single day? And what impact does that have? So I'm, a, I'm just going to be the, the kind of the question asker and, um, and toss out a few things and then just let these guys uh, jump in with their thoughts. So here's the first question uh, for you guys. How does faith, when it comes to faith, how does faith itself look differently? Or even what does that look like in general when it comes to the kingdom of God? What does faith look like? Um, I feel like in the kingdom of God, all of our faith, like, derives from him and not from, like, the world or the, the things around us. Yeah, um, I actually looked up the definition of faith, and Google told me that it's a complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And so I think that in the kingdom of God, we kind of shift our faith from being in ourselves and in our family and in our friends and other things around us to being fully faithful to God and trusting in his plan for our lives. I've noticed personally, um, faith through God is much different uh, than faith through anything else because having faith through God brings peace, unlike having faith in other things. Yeah, and like when you have faith in God, like he's the only thing that can actually be constant. Like everything else in the world will fall away and it won't be able to satisfy you, but God is the only one who is able to fill that, that hole in your heart where only he can fit, you know? So having faith in him is completely different than 
having faith in other things in the world, you know? Yeah, like Hebrews 11, 6 says, faith is a belief in the one true God without seeing him. So like to always remember that he's there, like Angelina said, and he will always stay constant in your life. Good. Um, so I guess my question would be, and um, we'll get into the, to the next question, but just kind of thinking as you guys were talking through that, um, did, like from your standpoint, just in your opinion, has 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 living by faith in God been easier or more difficult? Like if you think about, I don't know, for most of you guys, if you've been a Christian for most of your life or just recently became a follower of Jesus, but, um, you know, kind of the, the world's ideas, like what, what are we putting our faith in? We're going to put our faith in ourselves, right? Or we're going to put our faith in science or we're going to put our faith in like certain things. Um, do you feel like it's easier to live with, faith in those things or is it easier do you find it's easier to live with faith in god what what would you what's your honest opinion on that um i think that sometimes it's difficult to um always have faith in god because it's kind of scary knowing that you're not in control knowing that you don't get to choose what always happens but it's also really rewarding because you know that he wants the best for you and he has good plans for you, even though sometimes you can't see it until later on. Yeah. Uh, like, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> well, it, it can have an ups, it's ups and it's downs, but knowing the fact that you have Abba, your father, the creator of the world on your side, just changes the whole spectrum just because just like in Romans eight thirty one, if God is for us and who can be against us, we're unstoppable. Our faith, Dude, it's it's incredible just to think about it just because we are unstoppable. God's told us that. Yeah. That's good. Um, so let's let's dive into like what that faith actually looks like. Um what what type of faith, like if you were gonna describe the kind of faith that you feel like God wants is looking for, that God wants us as believers to have. Um or even if you think about like the culture, like if people are watching us, what kind of faith do they want to see? Like what, what does that faith look like? Um, God says like he wants us to have childlike faith and to believe without ceasing. Yeah, I think also that like God is calling us to have bold faith because other people are watching us like from the outside and they see oh, that person's a Christian, like, let me see how they, like, they live their lives, and they kind of, like, watch, and God calls us to be bold. And we also want faith to grow by, like, flourish in his word, because that's what he gave us, and that's, like, our one tool that can defend us through everything, so as long as we have faith that we can grow by, like, we can also develop our purposes that he gave us. All of that helps us in just growing in our faith. And I think that he wants us to give away the materialistic things, give away the ways of this world and just give it all to him and give ourselves to him so he can work through us. And God even wants us to know, like, to have faith that he can do the impossible because if he can part the sea for Moses, then he can find a cure for what's going on right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. So true. Any other, any other thoughts on that? Um, it's really, I, I believe it's all like through actions. So having faith in God is different than having faith through anything else. Cause, cause we, we show it through our actions. Like if we really trust God, then when someone like picks on us, we're not gonna, we're not gonna fight them back because, because we have faith in God and we know he's, he's in control of everything. And it's really, it's really just like perspective through making choices throughout the day of like reminding yourself of what you have faith in and how you're going to, how you're going to use that through throughout your daily life. Mm -hmm. And I feel like uh, God allows us to go through hard situations or circumstances. So we always draw near to him and grow in our faith with him. Yeah. To piggyback off of what Claire said, like I said at the beginning, there's this ups and it's down and, well, you can think of this as a down, but at the end of the day, it's going to be an up. And I say that just because, for example, right now we're living in a pandemic, but 
the what you don't see behind closed doors is people are seeing Christ through this. People are coming to know Christ, and it's going to end up being one of the biggest and best things that's going to happen, even though it can look terrible at the beginning. Yeah, yeah we have to, we have to like remember that like faith isn't faith isn't always easy, especially because like we are built um, like we, we are grown up in a society that like hammers in our minds that like to see is to believe. Right. And like we don't we don't get to see God, but you get to see him in the actions and the miracles that he's done you just have to have your eyes open for them and like be ready to like understand that like these little things are really so much more they're really these miracles that god has placed in your life you know um and it it shows up in different ways you just have to be looking for it so you know you just have to keep in mind that like you can see god it's just not in the way that we all you know, always want to. <laughs> so. It's good. Um, I, I was just, as you guys were, were talking, I was just thinking through um, just the reality of like, if, what's the kind of faith that God's looking for? He's looking for faith that is genuine. And what Gracie said about this bold, like the, the kind of faith that in moments like this is when our, it, it thrives, right? I mean, this, like our, our faith should be built from moments like this. You know what I mean? Like anybody can believe when, when things are just kind of going status quo and when it's fairly easy or, or even like the natural thing would be to believe or just to kind of go along with it. But man, so many, you watch the, the, those things that test our faith and those things that strengthen our faith and develop our faith are moments like this. Right. That really should like this is these are those moments that that our faith should be lived out in such a bold way that other people are looking at going. There it is. Like, that's why Christianity matters. Like, that's why it's such a big deal. And and maybe I think for, you know, for you guys, just as seniors, like to think through that you guys are now find yourself in a time where it's, it's not the time to kind of shrink back with your faith. It's the time to be even more bold, even more courageous. and live it out before a watching world who's wanting to see does is this actually genuine does this make a difference in their life especially when the rubber meets the road and when things are difficult cool all right you guys you don't have to respond to that. that's all good um all right so let me, last question i'll ask uh, to you guys um why does your faith matter why, why right now, like if, let's say you're talking to a, a you know, non-believing friend at school or somebody who's wanting to just to know, like get a, get a peek behind the curtain or into your heart, into your life. Why does faith matter? Like if, if our faith is supposed to be the centerpiece and the foundation of our lives, why? Why is that so important to God? Why does, why does our faith matter so much um, to, to our everyday lives and the way that we live? I feel like our faith represents us and how we present Jesus throughout our faith. And also it just impacts us and motivates us. You know, that's what I love. Um, yeah, for me, that kind of brings me to like John eleven twenty five, where he says, um, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even if he dies. And those who live and believe in me will never die. Do you believe this? So basically, like, through faith, we are promised a home better than, like, any of us could ever imagine, where because of God's love and grace, we get to spend eternity with him and with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, so once we die, like, we, if we have that faith and we show that, um, you know, in our everyday lives by, like, giving everything to him, then not only does like our faith have the power to shine through to others and you know maybe help them want to join us and be our brothers and sisters in Christ they get to go to heaven with us but we get to be promised that home for eternity with you know our good father so it's good um well for example for myself um uh, my faith is huge for me because without it my life is meaningless me waking up in the morning 
It doesn't mean anything. I'm living for myself, making my own decisions. And as we all know, the human's decisions are what God wants. And without it, well, I'm meaning with uh, no point in it. But yeah. Piggybacking yeah. backing off of what Thomas said, um, I think that like, if you're if you're not living for God, like who are you living for? Because if you're just living for yourself, like we're eventually, we're going to die one day. And like that, I mean, the way I see it is like, if you're just living for yourself, like your life was kind of a waste because like whenever you're living for God, like you're impacting his kingdom and like other people are going to see the way that you live your life. And they're going to say, I want what that person has. Like, I want to live my life like that. And that opens up an opportunity for you to like speak into them for you to share your testimony with them and to share what Jesus has done for you. And so like, whenever you're just living for yourself, like you're not going to have any of that. And like your life is just going to, it's kind of a waste, you know? I also think it's important to have faith in times like this, like not even talking about how you can reflect to other people, but also for yourself, because like as seniors, you know, we thought we knew we were going to have a prom. We thought we knew that we were going to have our graduation. Like we thought that we knew that we were going to have all of these things because everyone else got them because it's tradition, you know, like you get to your senior year, you have all these activities and then you graduate, which is like the best part of it all. And so I think it's really important to have faith in God because when stuff like this happens and you're not so certain, you know, what else do you have? other than your faith. Like you need to trust in him. You need to trust that he's making the best choices for you. He, you need to trust that he has a plan for you because when this all started happening, like we were all kind of in a bad place, you know, we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't know if we were even going to have our graduation, which we've been looking forward to for the past 13 years. So I think that it's really important to keep that faith and just trust that he's going to work it out. I think it's like what Kayla said, we did lose everything, but God has stayed constant through all. And our faith is like the light at the end of the tunnel. Like no matter what, God is going to be there and we'll always have that. And that's like the biggest thing why faith matters. That's true. Um, personally, in my life, uh, faith has been like the first stepping stone. So, so like I needed faith to have hope and peace in my life. Cause without it, I was just like worried about everything. I, I tried to take it on my own and that just caused stress, unneeded anxiety. And then, and then where there's not faith that fills up with fear or, or like untrust, uh, untrust, uh, <laughs> untr untrust. I don't know. <laughs> I just trust issues, trust issues built up. And it's just, it's, it's like you need faith to have everything else. That's good. Um, all right, so as we kind of land the plane, um, let me just ask you guys this, like, and, and maybe it's a, a quick 15, 20 second answer. Think about students who are watching this um, and maybe in so many ways are listening to what you're saying and they're going, I, I want to have that faith. Like, I, I want to have that kind of faith that you're talking about and maybe they don't feel like they possess it or maybe it's just that they're looking at the circumstance and the culture right now and, and with just such uncertainty uh, with everything and how much fear and, and anxiety and, and all that kind of stuff is out there. Um, maybe they're just wondering what to do next. So what, what kind of wisdom would you give to students who are watching? Um, like, how would you encourage them when it comes to just faith and how they can live every single day trusting Jesus? Um, I would say just to, like, not give up, you know, um, I've heard so many times people say, like, oh, I have been praying for this thing in my life, and, you know, it's just, like, he hasn't fixed it yet, you know, and so it kind of goes along with what I was saying about, like, just keeping, like, your eyes open to, like, God's miracles, and you, with that, you have to have understanding of that, like, everything in, is in his time. And like, we don't have the ability to understand his timing because it's so great and it's so good. And right now we're in the middle of something where we cannot see a way out. 
because we don't have the means to do so. But with God, he does. And so just like, don't give up, keep praying boldly because he asks us to. And in the end, he like, he will show, show you the way, show the world the way. And, you know, there will be a light on the other side. Yeah. Also, uh, I mean, there's, there's pure evidence about it in the Bible in Luke chapter 11, verses nine through 10. It says, and I say unto you, ask and it shall be given to you. Seek and it shall be given to you. Knock and it shall be opened to you. I mean, if you keep grinding, you're going to get it. God's going to give it to you. He's going to see that. I actually have some notes from when we went on our senior trip back in November. And it says, you can't cling to what you want. When you surrender things to him, sometimes he takes it, sometimes he gives it back, and sometimes he gives you more. And I think that that's just a good reminder that all the material, materialistic things, they'll, they'll perish. You won't have those things forever, but God will always be constant and consistent, and he wants the best for you. Just because he th like takes something from you, it doesn't mean that he doesn't want you to have it. It means that he wants you to have something better. I mean, even in like Roman 8, 28, it says, we know that all, in all things, God works for the good of those who love him and who have been called according to his purpose. As long as like Angelina said, we pray boldly, we stay strong in our faith, no matter what, he has good things ahead for us and it will come in his time. We just have to remember it's not in our time. Yeah. And yeah. we have to like remember that even though the times are tough right now, he's going to give back all the years that the locusts have taken from us. You know, like everything that we're losing right now, he's going to give back, I think, even greater. Yeah, I've kind of, um, I would just like encourage you if you're listening to this, like to take some time and reflect on everything that God has brought you through, because this is, this is not the worst thing that's ever happened to you probably. And like, like you've been through hard things, all of us have, and just seeing like how God has brought you through that, like he's going to bring you through this too. And like, there's a light at the end of the tunnel and just have faith that he had, that his plan is greater than whatever's going on right now, because like everything that's happening right now, like he knew it was going to happen before we were, like, he knew like all of this stuff like was going to happen. And, and like, I think that he's like prepared us for it. I believe that like, you know, everything that we walk through has, like, brought us to this place, and, like, God has given us everything that we need to get through it. Good. Well, um, I want to thank you guys, because you are, these aren't just statements that you're making, like, you are, you are having to live the things out that you're talking about, um, and you find yourself in a season where you're in the midst of it. You're not on the outside looking in or you're not on the end looking back and seeing some of these things happen you're now stuck right in the middle of it going we're going to have to choose to trust god this is not how we thought it was going to be this is not what our senior year we thought was going to look like and it seems like almost every day we get more bad news about something that's not going to happen the way that we thought it was going to happen right and yet you guys are choosing to lean in and say god we believe that you have something great or something more in store we we trust that you have a plan and we're going to lean in and live out our faith. And so I'm just, I'm proud of you guys for being willing to do that because uh, it's not easy. And so um, just know that that's, that scene that you guys are not just making statements, but you're choosing to have to live that out in this season that you find yourself in. And so um, I just appreciate you guys weighing in, leaning into the conversation and, and um, just for how you have led this year. Um, you know, even when, when we haven't been able to meet week in and week out like what we had hoped, um, you guys just trying to stay faithful and trying to continue to use your influence to, to impact the rest of Reckless. So appreciate you guys jumping in with us. And uh, for those of you guys that, that are watching, um, I just want you to know that we love you and we care about you. And, um, and maybe with this whole faith conversation, I think the, the understanding that maybe you've never come to a place in your life where you put your faith and trust in Jesus as Savior. And and that is the starting point for you to be a part of God's kingdom, for you to be able to live not with faith in yourself or not with faith in the temporary things that you see, but choosing to live by faith in the God who loves you and made you. And so that relationship is, is, is open and available to you through um, you put your faith and trust in him. And so if you've never done that, you can do that now, even at the end of this video and just take a moment and, 
confess your need for God and ask him to forgive you and, and save you from your sin and to invite him into your life and then to begin to allow that to be the foundation and the cornerstone of everything that you do moving forward. So we want to help you alongside of that. Um, you can send an email students at westridge.com. If you've made that decision, uh, you can reach out to us, WRC students on uh, Instagram and uh, let us know so that we can follow up with you and help you in this new life. So we love you. We hope you have a great week and uh, we'll talk to you next time.